The global reopening remains on track as vaccination rates climb around the world. Inflation is the new concern, but the spike so far looks transitory. We still like the pandemic recovery trade that favours equities over bonds, the value factor over the growth factor, and non-US stocks over US stocks. Hi, I'm Andrew Pease, and I'm the Global Head of Investment Strategy for Russell Investments. Welcome to the third quarter update of our Global Market Outlook for 2021. It's a case of so far so good in terms of vaccines and COVID. As of mid-June, vaccination rates are close to 50% in the United States and Europe and over 60% in the United Kingdom. Japan is lagging with just 15% of the population vaccinated, but should hit 50% by late August as the rollout accelerates. New, more contagious COVID-19 variants are spreading, but the good news is that the existing vaccines seem effective against these as well. This means that the reopening should continue across the major developed economies through the second half of 2021. It also implies that the focus for markets has now shifted to the strength of the growth rebound, what this means for inflation, and the timing of when central banks will start to taper back asset purchases and eventually raise interest rates. We think that the inflation spike is mostly transitory. It's a combination of base effects from when the consumer price index fell during the initial lockdown last year and temporary supply bottlenecks. We think it's going to take until probably the middle of next year for the US economy to recover the lost output from the lockdowns and it will probably take longer in other economies. This means that we shouldn't see broad-based inflation pressures until after then. It also means that market expectations for the US Fed to begin lifting interest rates in 2022 are premature. We expect the Fed to commence tapering back asset purchases in early 2022, with the second half of 2023 the most likely timing for the first interest rate hike. The conclusions from our cycle, value and sentiment investment decision-making process are largely unchanged from our previous quarterly report. Global equities remain expensive, with the very expensive US market offsetting slightly better value elsewhere. Sentiment is close to overbought, but not near dangerous levels of euphoria. The strong cycle outlook delivers a preference for equities over bonds for at least the next 12 months, despite expensive valuations. It also reinforces our preference for the value equity factor over the growth factor and for non-US equities to outperform the US market. Let's now look at the main risks over the next few months. There are still risks from new COVID variants, but these are fading with the success of the vaccine rollout. The biggest watch point now is inflation and the response of central banks. Our expectation is that the inflation spike is mostly transitory and that the major central banks, led by the US Fed, are still two years from raising interest rates. An inflation spike that persists into the second half of the year, however, could trigger a more hawkish tone from the Fed. This would be a challenge for equity markets that offer value only when compared to the current low level of interest rates. Our inclination would be to add risk on any market dips caused by changes in Fed tone. The cycle is still positive for risk assets and a good rule of thumb is to remain positive on equities until the Fed has lifted rates to a level that starts to slow economic activity. Let's turn to our asset class preferences. We prefer equity markets outside of the United States. The recovery as economies reopen after the pandemic should continue to favour cheaper financial and cyclical value stocks over more expensive technology and growth stocks. The rest of the world has more exposure to cyclical value stocks than the United States. Emerging markets equities have been poor performers so far this year. They've been held back by their high weighting to technology stocks, concerns about slowing credit growth in China, and the slow rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. These last two concerns should start to ease later in the year as Chinese credit growth stabilizes and vaccines become more available across emerging markets. High yield and investment grade credit are expensive on a spread basis, but have some support from a positive cycle view that supports corporate profits growth and keeps default rates low. We see slightly better value in emerging markets debt which should get some cycle support from US dollar weakness and from the vaccine rollout. 
Government bonds are expensive and we expect that yields will be under upward pressure as output gaps close and central banks look to taper back asset purchases. The US dollar has been supported this year by market expectations for early Fed tightening. It should weaken now that investors have fully priced in Fed tightening expectations and as the global economic recovery becomes more entrenched. The dollar typically gains during global downturns and declines in the recovery phase. The main beneficiary is likely to be the euro, which is still undervalued, but currencies such as British sterling, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar and Canadian dollar can also make further gains, although they are no longer undervalued from a longer term perspective. The success of the vaccine rollout sets the scene for a strong global economic recovery in the second half of the year. This should help equities continue to outperform government bonds. It also means that the rotation away from expensive, technology-heavy growth stocks and towards cheaper cyclical value stocks should continue. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll talk again soon. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.